Hello everybody and welcome back to uh, this. This is going to be another one of those videos. I know this is not ideal, but um, I have so much going on. This is just what winter sewing is going to be, the videos this year. I'm sorry. Go ahead, downvote it. Send me a nasty message. It's fine. Whatever. But um, I know a lot of you do appreciate this. So I'm going to do it and tell you what I'm going to winter sew or at least try to winter sew because uh, my life is just... <laughs> It's a big old mess right now with all this house stuff and everything. So, getting right into this. I am in zone 6B slash 7, Tennessee. And uh, if you are not familiar with the winter sewing method, you need to go to my playlist. I'll put a link to it here um, in the cards and check that out. The winter sewing method is great for people uh, like me without a lot of indoor space and who don't want to be, you know, starting seeds under grow lights and things. It's just, it was a game changer and understanding it was so important. Okay, the first one I have here is Atroplex Hortensis. This is uh, the plume mix. The thing about Atroplex, they do have some cold tolerance. So even though I'm winter sowing this one around the end of March here in my yard personally, uh, you can actually winter sow this one uh, February, March, depending upon where you are, uh, where you'll still get a little bit of light frost that can handle that, but not like hard freezes. So admittedly, I'm a little behind the times in this one. Also behind the times on this one, uh, I mentioned the yarrow in the other video. I sewed some yarrow, some older packets. This is another packet that I didn't even realize I had. So that one's getting sewn. Same can also be said with cat mint. Uh, this cat, not cat mint, well, catnip, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, this is also a perennial. I should have sewed this earlier back in January, early February, but what are you gonna do? Um, I'm kind of scatterbrained right now, honestly, uh, so I'm just going with the flow. Next year I have some quinoa. This is the brightest, brilliant quinoa. Uh, I love the shades of this. I have to save seeds for this because the seeds are always somewhat expensive. Um, this one, again, is another one that demonstrates some tolerance to the frost and to the cold. I have not had luck overwintering it with the freezes and everything because it's a little bit too tender, at least here in my yard, but I can start this one in February or early March winter sowing. There should be no problem there whatsoever. The same can also be said with this Mizuna. This one was one of those three packets and it just kind of got tossed away to the side. Um, you know, I love salad greens, but I'm just not in a position to be sowing a bunch of, you know, trays and seeds full of salad greens right now. So I am not gonna worry about that yet. Uh, I've got bigger fish to fry. I also have this huge bag, uh, not really a bag, packet of marigold seeds. This is the Cracker Jack mix. I like this one because it's nice and tall, uh, good stems for cutting. This one is frost tender. Uh, you cannot, this one cannot be exposed to frost. That means I'm probably gonna winter sow it around the end of March into early April if I want to really, um, you know, get a head start. A lot of these you can direct sow in the garden or do whatever and you don't have to winter sow them, but winter sowing is like such a great thing if you wanna get an early start and early blooms and everything like that. So just putting it out there. Again, if you are not familiar with winter sowing, it is so, so vitally important that you watch my winter sewing playlist. I get a lot of questions like, so do I just throw this in the ground? And that's just, it's not how it works. Well, I mean, sometimes it can work that way as like a fluke, but that's not what winter sewing is. And I, I know I sound like crazy, like you have to watch the video, but you really do. I try so hard. I've tried my best over the years so much to explain it in depth and detail because it really was just a great, it's a great technique. Anyway, moving on, we have Phlox. This is Blushing Bride. This is another one that can take a little bit of cold and frost. Um, I've actually overwintered this one successfully in the hoop house before here in zone six, seven-ish. Uh, so that one can be started early, again, February, even January, March. Uh, gotta get those with an early start to get a good bloom, especially if you live somewhere with warmer summer weather like I do because they do not like they don't, they don't like to eat, at least it seems like. Uh, this is another one that was in the other video. This is Lava Terra. It can handle a little bit of cold. I've never had success overwintering it here, but uh, early in the spring is a good choice. Usually about end of February 
mid-February, March is when I'm filming that. Next, we have some of these bigger packets. Uh, I'm not sure if I grouped these or not, so you'll have to excuse me. Because I honestly don't know how organized I am sometimes. I'm not the most... Okay, these look like sunflowers. These are all sunflowers. I've been hoarding sunflowers for a few years now. Um, mainly because they take up a lot of space. And you don't get much for your money in terms of bloom per plant. So I have this stockpile of sunflowers that hopefully I'm going to be able to plant this year. As I mentioned, this is another one that uh, should not be... Uh, let to frost. These will only do well in trays about one to two weeks after they germinate. Uh, very fast growing. For this reason, I usually winter sow these around the very end of March or the first week of April. My last frost date for some perspective is about the third week of April. So you want to be careful that you are not winter sowing these too soon. Obviously, you can direct sow them if you want. One of the main reasons that I winter sow is that I always have birds get in the yard and they will find every single sunflower seed. I don't know how they do it. It's, it's amazing. I guess, you know, whatever. But uh, when I sow them in trays, I don't have that problem. So I do sow them in trays and then I transplant. So there's that. Uh, looking what else I have here. I have to see if these are sorted. One second. I think I just hit the camera. Sorry about that. I know this isn't the greatest setup here, but I think if y'all knew what I was working with, um, I mean, this house barely has electricity. Let's just be real with each other. Um, I think you'd understand why things are so kind of haphazard right now. Uh, but I swear, I'm doing my best to get out content, and I, I am going to be... Really just going for it this year. Okay, these look like a bunch of greens. We have cabbage, I have some collards. Um, let's see, hold on, I'll separate them as I go. Uh, chives, I have, ow, I just hit my elbow on the wall, that hurt. Some German thyme, and, oh, um, well, that's it offer I'll talk about right now. Uh, these are all greens, obviously. Uh, they're cold tolerant greens. They can handle a frost. Some of them can even overwinter. I've had collards overwinter with no problem. The thyme, obviously, is a perennial. Again, perennials, you can start them pretty early January, February, as long as they are hardy to your zone. And um, some of the more frost tolerant greens, February, early March, uh, getting plenty big and time to move them into the garden before the summer season arrives. Also had in this stack, I had some red shizo. Red shizo, uh, it's very pretty. I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this shizo. If you are planting this in the garden, you have to watch it. It will take over. I'm not kidding. It will reseed everywhere. I planted this five years ago. I still got, as in the old yard, I still had one or two seedlings pop up every year. Um, reed seeds like mad, but if you can cut it back and control it, I think it, it's beautiful. It grows into these large, beautiful bushes. Just check where you are, um, if it's an invasive and whatnot. It is a member of the mint family, I want to say. Don't quote me on that. And it's very evident in its spread. But, uh, I usually winter sow this about in the March mid-March, something like that. Uh, doesn't need much time to get established. Uh, some people say they have problems with germination. I've never had a single problem with germination. I think because in the winter sowing, it gets a bit of cold weather in the bottle. And I think that's one of the main reasons that I've never really had problems with it. In this pile, I also have some red broom corn. Got some sorghum up in here. Uh, that's the same protocol as the sunflowers. Uh, tender to frost. want to make sure we protect them. Frost grows fast if you're going to transplant. Um, I'm going to winter sow it about the end of March probably uh, to do that. Also some nasturtiums. Uh, nasturtium seems to like it a little bit cooler so I usually winter sow those around mid-March. Um, mid to late March depending upon uh, where you are just so they can get nice and established before for um, the weather kind of turns hot and steamy. Like with most of these, I mean, you are going to have to kind of protect them 
from frost. Um, as long as the seeds have not germinated, you don't have to worry about frost or freeze or anything. But once the seeds have germinated, you do kind of have to differentiate between the different types and know what those types need. You know, while a lot of these trays, these seedlings can just sit outside in the cold and they don't care, um, these more tender ones, they're gonna have to be either taken inside or protected with a frost blanket. Again, there's a playlist. I detail all of this stuff in the playlist. I mean, nobody ever goes to the playlist. There's a playlist, sorry. Okay, this is the Cleome or Cleome. I think we touched on this one in the other video, I'm not sure. But again, uh, I consider this one more a tender, frost tender one. I'm not sure if it actually is, uh, but I usually do this one mid to end of March in preparation for uh, my last frost date. It's in transplant then. Purple coneflower is another one. I know I touched on this in the last video with Echinacea as a perennial. I could have done it back in January. Um, just I didn't even know I had this seed packet. I'm just gonna be honest. I'm so disorganized. I know that's not like disorganized, unorganized. I don't know. I know that's not like a good trait for a, a flower farmer, but what are you gonna do? Um, coneflowers, January, February, early start, great germination. Uh, they'll look awesome. I also have some peppers. Uh, first time I've had room for peppers in like five years. These are Anaheim hot peppers. I love Anaheim peppers. Yum, stuff them with cream cheese and wrap them with bacon. Sign me up, who's here? Um, as a pepper, they need to be started early. Uh, this is where it gets tricky. This applies to peppers and tomatoes. I'm sure I have tomatoes in here, so I'll talk about that now. I have a video in the winter sowing playlist about winter sowing peppers and tomatoes specifically. You'll love it. Um, anyway, so the peppers and tomatoes, they need an, about a six to eight week head start, obviously. So what I usually do is I winter sow these around the beginning of March, and this is one of the trays that I have to watch carefully. As long as they have not germinated, this applies to tomatoes also, as long as they have not germinated, everything is peachy keen, like, don't worry about it. Once they have started to germinate, you have to make sure that they stay warm. In some cases, in some years, this has meant that I also had to like, you know, keep the plastic on everything all day long. It's just about flexibility and trial and error and learning what works. I wish I had a better answer, but I mean, you just have to try it, unfortunately. And sometimes I have to bring those trays inside at night. If it's getting down to the 20s, I'm playing it safe. I'm bringing them bad boys inside. Last but not least in the stack, we have some big, no, we have some bucks. Wait, hold on, can I not read? Bex, big buck, Oprah, sorry. Oprah, <laughs> it's not Oprah. Big buck, Oprah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm delirious, I'm tired. It's okra, okay? It's not okra. You can't grow her out in your yard. Okay. Same thing as with sunflowers. They're, they're frost sensitive. Um, they grow fast. You don't really need to start them in a tray. You can direct sow them. But if you want to, end of March, early April here in my zone, it's going to work out well. All right. I need to focus. I need to refocus. I'm starting to lose composure. Let's move on to the next packet or grouping of seeds. I'm starting to lose it. Okay, this looks like it's going to be a lot of mixtures of vegetables and flowers as well. And I know a lot of y'all are just flower farmers and not really interested in vegetables, but some people are. And I originally was going to make a different channel, but honestly, I don't feel like it. It's hard to manage multiple channels and manage the comments. Uh, Gomfrina, love Gomfrina. You might know it as Globe Amaranth. Uh, very cool. I love this one. Uh, this is frost tender, I believe. I usually wait until about the end of March, early April to start this one here in my zone. Uh, also, I have some azure radum here. I don't know how this got overlooked. Usually, I either direct sow this very early spring or um, late fall. But they can also be started with a winter sowing method. Uh, if you're doing that, I'd do either end of January, very early February, 
Or, I mean, you can get away with March too, depending upon how hot it gets, uh, how quickly in your yard. I have some green thumb amaranth. I love amaranth. You guys hear me talk about amaranth all the time. This is a heat lover, uh, very much like the sunflowers in terms of uh, when you want to sow it, you can winter sow it in trays. However, um, transplanting it, it can be a little bit difficult. You have to wait until it gets pretty big so that it's easier to handle. These seedlings are teeny tiny and kind of delicate if you try to transplant them too early. So what I actually do is I wait till they get pretty big and sow them really thick. And then I just transplant big clumps of them. They don't mind growing on top of each other. Uh, you don't have to separate them out. It's not that critical. Uh, they do grow pretty fast. I usually sow these about end of March, uh, mid-March in winter sowing. So um, really adaptable, a really nice adaptable one that doesn't need a lot of fuss and attention. I also have basil, this is another heat lover. Uh, this one's very much like the sunflowers and everything else we've discussed here. Uh, technically you can uh, direct sow them, but you can get them on early start in the trays in the winter sowing. Usually about mid to late March is when I'm going to do that. Uh, you'll get tons and tons of basil. Uh, I don't know why all the basil packets are always so huge. I do like basil as filler and foliage though. And of course I like to eat it in my spaghetti. <laughs> I don't know. This is Aunt Molly's ground cherry. Uh, the culture on this one is very similar to the peppers and the tomatoes. This is one that you're gonna have to get a good early start to get the plants nice and established before um, they go into the ground because they're gonna be little things for a little while. Um, not as slow as the tomatoes and peppers though. Usually do this about mid-March to late. Eh, mid-March, early March, something like that. Um, but yeah, ground cherries. I just think they're kind of a fun novelty. I don't really even like ground cherries, uh, but hey, what are you gonna do? I also have some flowering tobacco. This is the Fragrant Delight mix. Uh, very similar to the tomatoes and peppers, the culture of this one, where I am starting it early, making sure I'm keeping it warm, letting those tiny seedlings get established. Um, you know, I've only had marginal success with flowering tobacco, if I'm being totally honest. I'm still kind of figuring things out myself. Also have some petunia. This is the Allegra Italian Grandiflora double petunia. You might remember those, those beautiful purples that we grew. I don't know. When did I grow those? Last two years, I guess. Uh, finally got the seed for them. Didn't have to buy them as plugs. Uh, I have a video about growing petunias from seed. They need a little bit of extra care, but uh, they grow well from winter sowing. Probably going to start these uh, late February to early March. Um, again, this is one that's frost tender. You want to make sure that these are not getting cold. That's very important that these do not get cold. And a lot of these tender ones, if they do get cold, uh, a little bit more than they like, their health can suffer. So, something to keep in mind. Also have some butternut squash. I'm a huge squash fan. I love heirloom squashes. Um, I just love them. The thing about them, I also have some, however you pronounce this, I'm not even gonna try anymore. Um, Again, a heat lover, you can direct sow these easy peasy, but they also do well from winter sowing. Uh, they are fast growers, so I usually don't winter sow these until the first week of April or something, about two weeks before the first frost date, or first frost date, last frost date, sorry. And um, they'll be ready to pop into the ground and have a head start in the soil. Here's the tomatoes, got some brandy ones. I think I also got a packet of A. Blinken somewhere too. Uh, but again, there's a video in the playlist. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you about it. There's a video in the playlist. I have some Luna Mix Hibiscus. This is actually a perennial hibiscus, which is interesting. I think it's perennial to zone five. Um, I usually get at least one or two packets of like for funsy, you know, type seeds that I'm like, yeah, I'll grow that, I'll give it a try. Uh, this is one of those, since it's a perennial, I guess I'm gonna, I should have put it out already, but uh, February, early March is when I'm gonna put this out and see how it grows. Very new to me, 
Sorry, I don't know all the details. Zinnias, uh, you guys have heard me talk about zinnias about a million times to the point that you're probably tired of hearing me talk about zinnias. Again, same thing as sunflowers. They can be direct sowed technically if you want. Uh, I like to start them in trays personally. Um, just because some of these varieties are a little bit more expensive. This entire stack of zinnias. That's ridiculous. Not to mention the ones that I've been having in my own little mini breeding program. But, um, especially with some of the more specific expensive varieties, I like to start them in trays to make sure I'm getting the most for my money. And, uh, usually I start those about the last week of March first week of April. They grow pretty fast. They are able to tolerate being in trays for a while, but I mean, ideally you never want to have to leave anything for in trays too long. I mean, that's not good. Uh, last year I was guilty of that. I left them in there for well over two months probably. It was not a good thing. Okay, moving on to our next stack of stuff. Oh, this is fun. This is more uh, summer vegetables. I have some pole beans and some black beans. Those are getting direct sowed. I don't know why I showed you that. Uh, technically, I guess you could winter sow them if you want. I don't know how they do. I've never done it. Those are getting direct sowed. Also, some Roma 2s because Italian beans are my favorite. And some Fast Lady uh, Northern Southern Pea is what it says. So it's like a... It's like a cow pea, but adapted to the north, I guess. Um, this is more sunflowers. This is the gummy bear mix that I found from Johnny's. I was lucky to get those. I was really excited to get those. And let's see what else I got in here while we're just going for it. We have some bodacious yellow corn. Yes, sign me up, delicious homegrown sweet corn. It's been years and it's delicious. If you've never had homegrown sweet corn, like literally within 10 minutes of it being picked, man, I think you're missing out. I think it's worth it. Also some white popcorn because I love popcorn. Also some uh, Alderman telephone pea which should probably be in the ground by now because the soil can be worked and I should have these in the ground. So they're gonna go over there, they're gonna get direct sowed and we're gonna pretend like I didn't just completely forget to plant those. Um, it's all good, it's all good. Plant your peas as soon as your soil can be worked. I should plant the sweet peas too, but what are you gonna do? Um, can you tell I'm kind of just a frazzled mess? Other summer annuals that can be direct sowed or that can be winter sowed in March to April. We have Cosmos. I have two different types of Cosmos this year. I have a yellow. Oh, I have three. I have a yellow, a pink, and the Bright Lights Orange. Um, I also have Ty, oops, Ty Red Roselle. Um, if you've seen that, I love that. It's a kind of tropical looking plant. Uh, Roselle Tea, awesome. I love the pods, they're very cool. Also, Black Eyed Susan. I have tons of Black Eyed Susan varieties, as well as Celosia, certain types of Celosia. Uh, Black Eyed Susan and Celosia specifically, their seeds are very small, so I do like to winter sow those. Uh, usually in March, um, at the latest last week of April, the Celosia, I can wait a little bit longer just because, you know, they get bigger a little bit quicker. The Rudbeckia kind of just linger a little bit. This is uh, Rudbeckia hirta, to especially note. Uh, it's the annual Rudbeckia. Some of them are perennials. Um, of course, you can start the perennials a lot earlier. And of course, this all varies depending upon, you know, just where you are. Uh, lots more tomatoes and some amaranth. And here's some asters. Same thing applies with aster. I would probably sow aster at the beginning of March. Uh, giving it time to establish during the period of cold, uh, ideally, I think. Some cress got into this mix of seeds. I don't know. I don't think I had any rhyme or reason to my, um, my organization here. Cress. I uh, could probably winter sow those now very early. Enjoy the cold. No problem with cold tolerance there. Uh, so I'm going to set those off to the side. And... Uh, Get them out of this warm weather stack. Also have some 
uh, red foliated white cotton. Love growing cotton just because it is a beautiful ornamental, especially in wreaths and things. Uh, check with your local whoever about growing cotton. Some places have regulations for them. Obviously, uh, those are a warm season plant. Don't let them get cold. Usually start those about the end of March, first week of April. Get them a head start. And uh, you could direct sow if you're somewhere warmer. But actually, that head start is really important where I am because my season is just barely long enough to get the cotton to do its thing. So, something to keep in mind. Got some more herbs. This is rosemary. That's a perennial. Should have started it already. Oregano, another perennial. I probably should have started already, but... Uh, I'm just gonna do what I do start it whenever it happens um, but anyway um, February March is when that should have been done what are you gonna do I also have some uh, dent corn this is uh, Kentucky rainbow corn it's a very pretty one it gets like 16 feet tall I know you can't be planting corn, all your different corn next to everything trust me I know you don't go tell me in the comments uh, also some Tennessee Red Valencia peanuts. I love growing peanuts. Haven't grown peanuts in years. I'm so excited to finally have the space again. Homegrown peanut butter. So good. Seriously, it's so good. A little bit of cinnamon. Oh, a little bit of honey. Oh, it's so good. I'm already dreaming about it. Um, all right, let's see. Hold on. I'm almost done. I swear I'm almost done. Also, I wanted to quickly mention why I'm on this topic. I had the Abley and tomatoes, some Merlot lettuce. Again, that's going to be the same protocol as growing our greens that I mentioned earlier that can handle some cold. So, tolerant cold can handle it. Uh, I have some Astro Gold Sunflowers. These are like the kind of the pink Astro ones that I showed you earlier. And some Moonflower, another tender one. Uh, beautiful one. I really love Moonflower because it has all the beauty of a morning glory, but none of the annoying invasiveness of a morning glory. Um, been growing, been growing these moonflowers for years and they, they don't reseed. They're beautiful. They're so fragrant. Oh, I mean, they only open at night, but on a full moon, you go out there and the fragrance is, oh, oh the smell. A lot of these have really beautiful smells and I'm a sucker. Um, I love moonflowers. I can't wait to grow those. Moving on, uh, just showing you some of these other ones. They can be direct sold or they can technically be winter sold at the end of March, early April, depending upon uh, your frost date. Um, one to two weeks, three-ish weeks at the most before your frost date. I have some cantaloupe, some moon and stars watermelon, some more squash, a pumpkin because I'm obsessed with pumpkins, uh, gourds, and Torch Tithonia. Uh, Y'all know I love Torch Tithonia. It's the big, tall orange that so just butterflies. Um, anyway, I treat it like a sunflower pretty much. It's frost tender. Uh, it's technically Mexican sunflower, so uh, imply what you will about the weather requirements it needs. Likes to be nice and warm. Always a nice show. Have a kale mix. That's going to be the same protocol as the greens. It can even overwinter here. It's plenty tough. I probably should have started it already. Um, I have some Cubanelle peppers. I don't know how those got in there. And some spring wheat. Spring wheat should have definitely probably already sowed those. But, I mean, are you seeing the trend? Um, I'm very much a just go with it type of person. <laughs> and I know a lot of you, a lot of y'all are like, hate that about me, but I mean, I'm just a real person. This is really me trying to do all this. So, um, I'm not trying to hide anything or really uh, give any kind of false ideas about anything. This is really what's going on. Okay. I have some pickling cucumbers because yum. Carrots. Don't winter sow your carrots. Don't winter sow your beets. All this stuff should have already been planted. I'm so behind. It makes me want to just, I don't know. Radish, turnips, leeks. I'm saving those for the fall. They're going to be overwintered. Onions, saving those for the fall to overwinter. Uh, Bloomsdale spinach definitely should have been planted already. Uh, responds very well to winter sowing, I might add. Uh, I think I'm going to save this for the fall. And so it in the fall, but... Um, Excellent winter sowing, January, early February, 
spinach, fresh spinach. Yum. Uh, amazing. Um, some more lettuce. A lettuce mix because apparently I thought I was going to eat a lot of salads. And some arugula. Again, same. Winter greens protocol. Uh, early, early February, late January. Should have planted them already. A lot of them can be direct sowed. It's really just flexible and up to you and, you know, what you want to do. I think that's it. <sighs> okay. I think that's it. I think that's all the seeds. As you can see, this is a giant, huge mess. Um, I'm not organized. I am in no way ready to plant anything in the yard. Um, I'm in the process of moving. I don't really have my stuff anywhere. All of my belongings are packed away in boxes. I have a house full of asbestos. Um, the back wall is completely rotten and falling in. There are vines crawling into the bedrooms, but um, it's chill. It'll be fine. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I've been thinking about maybe like getting an RV or just pitching a tent. It's probably more likely. I ain't got no money. <laughs> I think more likely I'm going to be just pitching a tent in a yard and sleeping on the ground for a while because at least the weather's very be nice and I got stuff to do. That's really about it for this video. I'm so sorry for the rambling and whatnot and everything, but uh, I just thought I would be in a better place to start all these seeds by now. And But that's kind of my nature anyway. I just get real overzealous and... Um, is that the word I want? I'm not even sure if that's the word I want. I get real overeager and think, this is gonna be great! And I just go for it. And sometimes it's great and sometimes it's not. Uh, but I'm also very cautious to the point where it's usually gonna work out fine anyway. So thank you so much for watching. It really does mean a lot to me. I am not joking when I say that. I know these videos aren't great. I know you guys don't wanna just sit here and ooh, look at my hands holding seeds, you know, but uh, it's all I got right now. So uh, the links to everything are down in the description below if you want to check them out. Uh, I always appreciate it when you do. Uh, if you want to help the channel, uh, stick a playlist on and just walk away from your computer and just let it play out. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, there's Patreon if you want. It's down there. I don't really do anything on Patreon. The main reason is I feel like information should be free. I hate I, I don't shouldn't say hate. I have a strongly, st strongly, strongly dislike when there's a paywall to things that people enjoy. Like so many people would enjoy gardening. It's so healthy for you in a huge number of ways and there shouldn't be a paywall for it. So if you want to donate and go on Patreon and stuff, thank you. Thank you so much. But if you don't, I mean, I get your ad revenue. There's no pressure. I'm appreciative of you um, either way, and it really means a lot to me. I hope you are having such a beautiful day.